Greetings and salutations. This is Akirshan. In this video, I will be featuring the American Lockheed F-94D Starfire multi-role fighter. This aircraft is equipped with a single 20 millimeter Vulcan auto cannon. It sports 800 damage per second, which is huge. It has, and this is unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable, 3,000 rounds per minute. That is a huge rate of fire. And it has an effective range of 820. It also has rockets, which are salvo-fired, and they are effective against aircraft. Although, quite honestly, it is difficult to hit other aircraft with those rockets. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. As with all my fighters, I have equipped it with uh, upgrades of Control Surface Adjustment 4, which increases maneuverability in turns by 3% as well as Lightweight Airframe 4, which increases maneuverability in all axes by 3%. I can tell you that uh, this aircraft lives up to its description of being having low effectiveness in maneuvering combat. It is like turning uh, an unwieldy tank in the sky. So it needs every ounce of uh, maneuverable maneuverability uh, upgrade that it can get uh, because this is a single uh, cannon fighter I have equipped it with improved radio sight which increases accuracy by 15 percent I have equipped it with a universal ammunition which has equal parts chance of fire and equal parts chance of critical damage. Uh, if you are going to go with any type of gold ammunition, you could uh, go with either high explosive incendiary or high explosive. Now you go with high explosive incendiary because it does have such a huge rate of fire, 3,000 rounds per minute. I can't just, <laughs> I can't say that enough. That's just so huge. Uh, but, of course, you could also go with high explosive because it is uh, a large caliber weapon. I have equipped it with uh, automatic engine restarter. It uh, does have a vulnerable engine, so uh, it is my hope that that skill can help to uh, ameliorate that. And I have gone with the first aid kit so that we can get the pilot back into action uh, should he be injured uh, and that will help us again to get rounds on the target because as you may know once your pilot is injured it is very difficult to hit anything especially when you have a single cannon uh, and of course I have equipped it with heavy-duty control surfaces so that it, it will get further assistance in uh, maneuverability so uh, this aircraft is most effective at mid-altitude combat. And we'll look at the stats in a moment to see exactly what that means. Um, it is not a high-altitude aircraft. So looking at the specs, you can see that its optimum altitude is 800 meters. Uh, your higher altitude aircraft are going to be, you know, fighters are going to be uh, 2200 meters, 2500 meters, and beyond. Um, its optimum airspeed is 605 kilometers uh, per hour. Now, top speed at its 
best altitude. So when this aircraft is perfectly within its element, altitude-wise, its top speed is 945 kilometers per hour. In terms of average time uh, to turn 360 degrees, it is 13 seconds. So it's better than you know some aircraft, but uh, again, you're not going to be getting into any close turning dogfights uh, unless you just want to be eaten up alive by you know turn and burn aircraft. Uh, stall speed is 240 kilometers per hour. Uh, and that can be an issue sometimes, so you have to be very uh, cognizant of that. So um, it is a very powerful aircraft. I absolutely love the Vulcan uh, cannon. Uh, and the 3,000 rounds per minute, it just chews things up. Um, but the biggest struggle you'll have with this aircraft is just um, turning and maneuvering. So, you know, many times you're the best thing to do is to climb and flip over uh, in order to get back on whatever target that you need to put uh, rounds on. Uh, pilot skills wise, I have uh, put as much in maneuverability as I can going with aerobatics expert for increased maneuverability in all axes by 2% and aerodynamics expert uh, because we did equip a lightweight airframe uh, and control surface adjustment. So this increases the effects of those by 40%. So whatever percentages those um, that up those upgrades uh, improve maneuverability for the aircraft, it will do an additional 40% of that increase. Now, because it does have salvo launched rockets and it can be difficult to uh, hit anything with those rockets. I have equipped it with Expert Rocketeer, uh, which significantly increases the chance of directly hitting an aircraft with rockets. Um, I can tell you it is still difficult to hit aircraft with rockets. Um, but you know, it's very helpful with bombers. It's also helpful when that other aircraft is flying uh, directly at you head on. Uh, to just, you know, give them that nasty surprise of rockets, which most uh, pilots are not really expecting. They're just so focused on the guns and what they need to do, they're not thinking about the rockets that they're about to get in the face. Always a nice little surprise for them. In terms of paint schemes, you're currently looking at summer. This is winter. Desert and Marine. I'm thinking probably summer uh, is my favorite. It's kind of between summer and desert, but I kind of lean towards the, uh, the summer. All right, so um, what we are going to do now is to head over to World of Warplanes website and use their compare aircraft feature to take a look at this aircraft uh, in comparison to other tier 9 multi-role fighters. So we're going to do that now. We are here on World of Warplanes website using the compare aircraft tool uh, that they make available it is a fantastic tool to be able to use. Uh, I have lined up uh, on this page and another page the uh, various multi-role fighters at Tier 9 to compare against the Starfire. On this first page, we have the I-211 and the J-7W-2 Shinden Kai. Um, each one of these aircraft, I have gone in and fully customize them so that we um, give each aircraft uh, put it in its best light. Uh, looking at armament, uh, you'll see that uh, it indicates that the I-211 is slightly inferior to that of the Starfire, uh, whereas the J-7W-2 
uh, is uh, superior to the Starfire, at least in the stat. But what I would, how I would counter that is that the J7W2 has a very low rate of fire. Uh, the cannons are very powerful. Uh, that is certainly true, but uh, you're only going to get three, four or so uh, cannon shots before the J7W2's cannon has overheated. Um, so while it may look on in the stats that the J7W2 is significantly superior to the Starfire, I would say it is not, given the rate of fire uh, that the Starfire brings to the equation. Uh, bombs and rockets, uh, neither the I-211 or the J7W2 have rockets. They do have bombs, but they do not have rockets. Uh, and therefore, I consider that to be a negative for those two aircraft. It is really nice to have the rockets on the Starfire and be able to deal with aircraft, you know, going head on at you, or if you're behind a bomber, uh, and you need to take it out quickly because you're taking any air or excuse me uh, defensive fire from the bombers or maybe you have some enemy aircraft coming up to meet you while you're trying to deal with the bombers it's nice to have those rockets to you know get it done get the job done quickly uh, survivability uh, these aircraft are very similar in that regard um, the j7w2 slightly um, inferior in that regard but but not by much. You can see the hit points for all three of those aircraft are very similar. Uh, airspeed, uh, certainly the F-94D Starfire is vastly superior to the I-211 and the J-7W-2 in terms of airspeed. Uh, top speed at best altitude. Now again, this is where uh, you know the aircraft is totally in its element. It's at an, uh, its ideal altitude which uh, for the, you know, uh, 94D is uh, 1,800 meters, I believe. We'll see that stat in a moment. Uh, but you can see it, it clearly outclasses the I-211 and the Shinden Kai. And I can tell you that flying the um, J-7W2, it feels like a slow aircraft. I mean, you just feel like you're not getting anywhere. Whereas the Starfire, you're, you're booking it. Um, Average time to turn 360 degrees. Uh, now this is where the Starfire suffers. The I-211 you can see uh, is uh, significantly better than the Starfire and the J-7W2 even more so. Let's see if we can get out of that just a little bit so you can see the aircraft there at the top. Um, and you know, I mentioned to you that because of the rate of fire, the armament on the Starfire is better than that of the J7W2. But the counter to that argument would be that the J7W2 is has a much greater ability to turn and get its cannons on the target versus the, the Starfire. You know, you're you're moving along at a good clip, and you may have to, you know, uh, get some distance, flip over you know, vertically. Um, so to try to get back on that aircraft. All right. Um, optimum airspeed. Uh, again, the Starfire is superior to both the I-211 and the J-7W2 in that regard. Stall speed, um, better than the I-211, uh, but the Starfire is not as good as the J7W2 in that regard. But you know, the J7W2 is a slower uh, aircraft, so uh, it can handle those slower speeds better than the Starfire. Optimum altitude, uh, 1800 for the Starfire, and both the uh, J7W2 and the I-211 are, are low to mid, uh, lower mid, I should say, altitude aircraft. So um, rate of climb, which can be important if you're trying to get up there and escape something that's chasing you. Uh, the Starfire uh, beats out the I-211, but not the J-7W-2. 
All right, so moving on, we'll take these aircraft off here. And we have the uh, F-84B Thunderjet, uh, which is an aircraft that I uh, have and have enjoyed uh, flying, and the Blum und Voss P-212-03, uh, which is an outstanding aircraft. I just recently reviewed that aircraft, and it's one of my favorites for sure. Uh, gun armament-wise, um, the uh, Starfire beats out both the Thunderjet and the P-212-03. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the Thunderjet, that whole line is their, um, the armaments, the machine guns is really what they are, are quite underpowered. Um, but the P-212-03 has pretty good cannons and of course it's it's very maneuverable so you know when you judge that stat you have to take into consideration um, that the p21203 is much more maneuverable and therefore is going to be getting its armaments on the enemy target more than the starfire will be uh, bombs and rockets um, the thunder jet you know that line of multi-role fighters uh, is very powerful it has a lot it's equipped with a lot of bombs and rockets um, to take out ground targets uh, but it the thunder jet does not have salvo fired rockets to deal with other aircraft whereas the p21203 does have rockets and they're they're quite good uh, survivability um, the thunder jet slightly more uh, the p21203 slightly less and you can see that in the hit points. Um, although I will say that um, when you look at the hit points, uh, the P21203 seems to really uh, fall behind. But it's a much more maneuverable aircraft, so that may come into play in terms of the survivability of the aircraft. It may not all be about hit points. Uh, airspeed. Um, the, of course, the Starfire is going to beat out both the Thunderjet and the P-212-03. Um, but, you know, the Thunderjet and the P-212-03 are both pretty fast aircraft. Um, and again, there you see the top speed at best altitude. Uh, again, the Starfire is going to beat out those other two aircraft in that respect. Uh, maneuverability. Both the... Uh, Thunderjet and the P-212-03 are more maneuverable uh, to a huge extent than the Starfire. Um, you know, the Starfire, you, you make a pass, you shoot, you kill, or you, if you don't kill, you get some distance and you flip around and come back. Um, the Thunderjet and the Voss, you can, you know, get in a turning fight as long as you're not dealing with something like a, a Yawk or some you know, very maneuverable aircraft like that. Uh, average time uh, to turn 360 degrees. Again, you see that there that the Starfire just hugely lags behind those other two multi-role aircraft in that respect. Uh, optimum airspeed, Starfire is going to beat those other two out in that regard. Uh, same with the stall speed uh, in terms of uh, the Thunderjet and the P-212-03 are significantly better in that department because they're, they're slower aircraft and therefore uh, they're going to be able to handle those slower speeds better than the Starfire. <clears throat> um, optimum altitude, uh, the Thunderjet is the same as the, uh, as the Starfire, whereas the P-212-03 is uh, somewhat superior to the uh, Starfire in that regard. Uh, rate of climb, the uh, P-212-03, not quite as, as good as the Starfire. Uh, actually, I would say significantly inferior than the Starfire in that regard. So, you know, while it may have a slightly higher altitude capability than the Starfire, getting up there, it's going to be much slower than the Starfire, so and you're going to have trouble escaping uh, in the vertical realm in the P-212-03 as compared to the Starfire. 
um, the the Thunder Jet uh, in terms of climb is pretty much the same as it's just point three difference there between it and the Starfire. All right, so folks, I hope that helps you to put the Starfire in context uh, with other Tier 9 multi-role aircraft. Um, you know, every plane has its strengths and its weaknesses. Um, and it's always hard to say, you know, which trumps which. I think it really comes down to the pilot, right? And how you use that aircraft's strengths and how you minimize its weaknesses. Okay, so now we are going to head into a battle here and let you see how this uh, aircraft performs. I can tell you that um, in practicing it uh, before this video, uh, at, some, at one point I was able to uh, take out 28 enemy aircraft uh, and of course got the ace accolade for that so that was very nice um, but that kind of tells you what this aircraft is is capable of so let's see how she does we have drawn the northern bridgehead valhalla map and we are first going to head over to the military base and try Attention. to secure that. You are entering the zone controlled by the enemy. This aircraft does have a long um, engine boost. The one thing that I wish it had that it doesn't is the uh, is the consumable that resets the engine boost. Uh, for Show example, you your, do, some of your uh, heavy fighters have that, and that's a really nice feature. Um, but unfortunately, this aircraft does not have that. So, you know, usually as I'm coming into these first um, objectives, I will tend to not go in too fast because we're going to be dealing with, you know, air defense aircraft, and we're not going to be challenged by enemy. Be the enemy I was hoping to get him with rockets there, but it didn't happen. So there you go, flip over. That's probably the best way to turn with this aircraft is to flip horizontally. I'm sorry, vertically. Vertically. Folks, that is 3,000 rounds per minute. Make sure if you do any type of dive that um, you begin your pulling up way early. I'm coming in here. Ground attack aircraft. This, this fighter chews ground attack aircraft up. I mean, look at that. I'm using air brakes and uh, We've captured the enemy extend base. flaps to get easier now. stay down. If this guy dives at us, we are going to fire the rockets. Well, we don't have rockets. <laughs> oh well. We would have fired rockets had we not already used them. <laughs> this aircraft is really good at finishing off low health targets. So 
So we're kind of flipping vertically there. That's a yak, so you definitely don't want to get in a turning fight with that. So you see there with, you know, using extended flaps and um, air brakes, we were flirting with the stall speed there. Alright, so we'll come over here. We will flip vertically. That is absolutely the fastest way to do it. I just love that cannon. <laughs> if I had that cannon on some of my fighters that are nimble, wow. Like maybe a, a yak? Can you imagine having that cannon on a yak? Talk about OP. Speaking of yaks, okay, so it looks like we're in pretty good shape, although we do have a ground attack aircraft coming over to our military base has been captured by oh boy, the enemy. they got it. Maybe we can go and take it back. Our military base is launching strikes on the enemy. And this time I actually have rockets. So this XF5U, low health, so maybe we can take him out. Down here, and just dealing with a line of thunderstorms is approaching. Ground targets now. Unable to provide support. Do you copy? Over. And what is this? Oh, that's a XF 5U again. Enemy bombers detected. That put a hit on them. That's it. There's no way to break through for you now. You're on your own. So we're using extend flaps and air brakes here to stay behind this slower aircraft. The enemy is launching rockets at us from the military base. Take action. Okay, so finally we got that military base secure. And let's head over to the airfield and see what we can do there. This is a close match. Have 
our ground attack aircraft headed back over to our military base again we'll sneak <laughs> and if we can situate ourselves directly behind him we will fire the cannons off Keep he's gonna up. get us though Victory I'm afraid almost we're almost low health and he's got those vicious rear guns Whew. Folks, that was close. I really didn't think we were going to make it through that. Oh boy. This is not going to be good. We are on death's door here. Doing okay though. This XF5U though, we really need to be careful because if it gets its claws into us, we're gonna be in serious trouble. Trying to take out our air defense aircraft, though. I'm proud of you, pilot. Okay. Victory! Yay! <laughs> All right. So number one position, um, subjugator and effective fire and our grade rank there so let's head back to the hangar and take a look at the after action report let's see here uh, 10 aerial targets destroyed that's pretty good uh, damaged aerial targets over 9,000 that's that's pretty high to get the Avenger accolade. That was the um, XF-5U that uh, when I thought I had rockets and was going <laughs> to send them to him in his face. Uh, in fact, I did not have rockets and he killed us. Uh, but we, we got revenge. Yay! Um, and let's see here. Over 11,000 combat points. Uh, so, and let's see, there were one, two three three human pilots on each team um, let's see here the closest to us was a fighter uh, an I-250 uh, which got nine aerial targets okay and uh, let's see here rock 50,000 in damage, uh, not not too bad for an IL-40. Okay, so you can see the effectiveness of this aircraft and that, that cannon uh, that just, man, throws out the damage. 3,000 rounds per minute. Fantastic. Uh, and it, you know, it, it's not horribly maneuverable. They are unmaneuverable, but but uh, you know certainly you do not want to get in those uh, turning dog fights because uh, you're just you're going to lose those. But uh, if you can get some distance and turn around, flip over vertically, um, and uh, you're going to win those uh, battles. Um, so uh, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope that if you get an opportunity to fly this aircraft that you will have great success in it, which I think you will. And I will try to uh, post, I took some screenshots of the 28 aircraft destroyed. Um, I actually was in um, third rank, but I believe if I remember correctly there were two ground attack aircrafts that were uh, uh, ranks one and two. So uh, we were the top fighter. Uh, with 28 
um, kills. So I'll try to post that. All right. Um, good luck.